So what was it like for you guys? Is this the first time you've seen it with a Western audience or not? Uh, second time for me. Anything surprising about the audience reaction tonight or what you expected? Uh, something that I doubted before that uh, because something uh, that's uh, very oriental actually that can be shared uh, by uh, audience of arts and culture. So because of sometimes uh, when we uh, started to do the movies with kind of uh, local aura of any place that uh, uh, because uh, now distribution of films we have to distribute film to other markets in the world. So sometimes some things very local. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether it can be shared by others. But uh, uh, for this film, uh, so far, as far as I know, that uh, uh, the, most of the elements in this group actually can be shared by others. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to ask you both about is, uh, Ip Man seems to be the second character in this movie. This movie mostly seems to be about the character of Hong Kong. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you wanted to present Hong Kong in this film, and how you used Ip Man to tell the story of Hong Kong. Uh, for me, making this movie is just like making a time machine. Uh, so everybody can uh, go back uh, to 1950, uh, 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 the Hong Kong time. And then, uh, because we have uh, in, in Hong Kong, uh, because it's uh, it's developing so fast, so we have lost a lot of our historical heritage. Um, but on the other side, we would like to preserve the past. So uh, this movie is very important. I mean, for me and Herman, because we have um, sort of documented uh, something in the uh, in, in, in the drama. So that everyone can uh, have our collective memory. But the, you guys have made two Ip Man movies now, and the first one was very much an action film. When did you two decide to make the decision to make this one a bigger film about Hong Kong and not only about Ip Man? Was that the idea at the start, or did that uh, come later? And I think uh, most of you know that uh, uh, the first Ip Man movie uh, uh, that I made actually is the third one. And then uh, this one, uh, when I made this one, then uh, almost, uh, I think, uh, you, you know that Wong Kai uh, spent five years making uh, Grandmaster. And during the, uh, uh, the last year of uh, his production, then I made this one. So I can't say if this is the fourth one or the fifth one. It's a kind of confusion. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so uh, for uh, you men, we have already some email before. So what uh, I, uh, when uh, we uh, collaborated to make this movie, I just uh, tried to find something different from uh, uh, the two email movies before. So uh, for the uh, email, the legend is born, and as well as uh, this one, email, the final fight, I, we spent a lot of effort to contextualize this uh, hero, this uh, martial arts uh, grandmaster into uh, uh, his uh, uh, place of origin. So uh, also place of origin is kind of uh, confusing because uh, uh, it meant his place of origin is in Busan, but uh, uh, the place that made him famous is in, in Hong Kong. So uh, uh, for the uh, it meant the legend is born, the young man it meant during the Fukushima, we try to contextualize uh, the, the story with what's happening at that time. And uh, for the uh, later part, the autumn years of Ip Man, then uh, when he went to Hong Kong after the uh, new China uh, was established. So at that time, Hong Kong, uh, how, how Hong Kong looked like, and what's the social context, and uh, what's the uh, uh, colonial context affected uh, Ip Man and his relationship with uh, his uh, pupils. Let's try to make uh, some contextualization, articulations uh, of this man uh, to his uh, surroundings. But other directors and writers have made movies about Hong Kong's past in the 50s, uh, but their style seems to be very sentimental uh, and a lot of nostalgia. And you guys concentrated on the labor movement and the strikes and the colonial politics. 
I, why do you feel like this is so important for Hong Kong's identity? Uh, because uh, if uh, we try to look at the history of Hong Kong in the past uh, 100 years, uh, the uh, labor movement uh, is something that uh, we cannot avoid if we uh, really want to tell the story of uh, about Hong Kong history. And uh, also, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I think uh, starting from uh, maybe the 1920s, that's a uh, 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 Guangzhou and Hong Kong uh, general strike. It's, uh, it was the longest strike in world history, in, uh, I mean the labor movement in the world. Actually, uh, the labor movement uh, up to today is still happened in Hong Kong, but the scale and the way it, uh, uh, the labors that uh, they uh, manifest their uh, demands and requests, the ways may be different, but the things is still uh, there. So uh, the labor movement is something that uh, we kind of want. And actually, when, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when we are trying to contextualize the story uh, with the social context, that, uh, but still, something uh, I uh, cannot tell uh, that incident in this movie. For example, uh, the riot of Hong Kong uh, during the 1967. So in the lifespan of uh, uh, many this movie is about from uh, 1950 and then up to 1972. So something very important happened in 1967 should be included in this movie. But still, uh, well, because of some problem, I think censorship problem, so we we have to uh, avoid the part. Because this is a co-production. Yes, it's a co-production. Uh, in title, in the in the language of co-production. <laughs> and uh, we do have a uh, sentimental element. It is uh, all about the lives um, back in 1950s. Uh, those were the time. Um, it was the time that when people will buy a blanket as a gift. Nowadays, they know if you get married, I don't think you will buy you a blanket. And then uh, even, the, because the, the society is so affluent now, they even give new stuff to the Salvation Army. And uh, those, uh, that was the time when people are so hungry that they have to sell their children. And then, um, but uh, that was also, the best of the time when people won't sell their dignity. Uh, like uh, at the ending part of Big Man, this movie, uh, he won't trade his um, achievement for an apartment. Uh, there, there, there was no more street values back then. One of the things that's interesting about this film is the there is no individual hero. It's all about his school, his students. Uh, at the end, he does not rescue his student alone. He comes with all his students. Uh, this movie seems to be very much about uh, collective action. And I'm wondering, since you made the first Hitman movie, uh, the Occupy movements have happened, and there was an Occupy Hong Kong, I wonder if that influenced this attitude, that collective action is so important? Um, to me, it's not just uh, because uh, it's a uh, to be is uh, simply try to make a hero uh, uh, from a more realistic approach. Uh, because uh, when you look close to uh, or look into a person, then he still has to eat. Uh, he has to go to the toilet. Uh, he just look, not a, a fighter. Uh, he can he can be uh, very powerful, but uh, he still a human being. Just like when we are uh, uh, looking at somebody from a distance, that, that hero is uh, very high. But when you uh, get close to him, he's still a hero, but he still possesses the very human side uh, as a human being. In the film, Kung Fu is portrayed as a little bit useless. Uh, it cannot make money, it cannot feed people. Uh, do you feel like there is a place where Kung Fu is useful, or is it ultimately a thing that is very, not very useful at all? Of course, it's not as useful. Even uh, the Kung Fu master, they uh, still, they still survive. Uh, the survived Kung Fu master that I met, of course, Kung Fu is not as useful as before, because we have a gun, we have the atomic bomb. So. But is there any part but I, of But I think it is the, the virtue part of learning yes. martial arts. You know, it comes from uh, Shaolin, and, the, and the, actually uh, they have uh, 
some Buddhism, religious stuff inside. That's the part how to be uh, a decent man in martial arts. Uh, it's uh, it's the, ma the things that matter. So, excuse me, to be essential when uh, we are talking about uh, how useful is uh, martial arts or kung fu, is uh, to be essential in terms of what? In terms of uh, the, just like Erica just mentioned, the spiritually, there's uh, still some virtue, some esteem uh, about the uh, martial arts. And also uh, to be said, uh, martial arts and kung fu is at least two different things uh, in the uh, context or uh, context. Can you explain the difference? Uh, Marshall, as for example, now uh, there is uh, the official, uh, the office, uh, the, uh, the uh, Chinese officials, they address this kind of thing as martial arts. That's for performance. And Kung Fu origin, the very original Kung Fu uh, uh, started in the south of China. It's kind of that you can defense and attack. So for martial arts, maybe it's a broad, in a broader sense. But for Kung Fu, uh, it's a, a kind of that uh, you can uh, uh, in, in a simple way, you can fight and you can defend. So, martial arts that's like some uh, very national occasions, uh, especially in the Chinese mainland, uh, the national days, then you can uh, see some southern monk and they are uh, doing something like uh, like the, uh, some special skill. Lot as you can uh, see that it's really uh, rehearsed. Lot of real fight. So it's kind of performance, of course, uh, it still can be a kind of sport. This will be, oh yes, please. Uh, just like uh, Spider-Man, for me it's not uh, that, you know, coming out of that, uh, the, the spider thing is most important. It is the word that with great power comes, uh, you have the great responsibility. That is the, the spirit of uh, being Spider-Man. So being it man it is not his kung fu. It is uh, his way of life that, uh, which is uh, concluded at the ending of the story. He has written a, a couple of, uh, let's say, I don't know what's that. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. He said, being the person, you should be, uh, you should have a wood like a tree, but your leaves, you can, you can feel free in the wind, and then uh, you should be like a uh, Chinese corn, which is square inside, which means you have your principle, but you should be round at the edges. Um, in this film, when is you, the, the martial arts master of the Vietnam, is played by Anthony Wong Chao Sang, when is the last time the two of you worked together? Uh, last time. Not, not uh, so long ago, right? Uh, yes, the woman I just they were like, yes, woman I so, uh, is it, but also when he was starting out, uh, you two worked together on one of his, one of your both most famous films, the, uh, the Cha Su Bao, the untold story. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's a um, how is working with him now? I mean, you two have worked together for 20 something ah. years. Is he a very different actor now than he was then? Mm. It's very easy for me because I'm 